Hello and welcome to this webinar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a micrographics webinar. Um, today's topic will be um, best practices for detailed drawings and documentation. Um, this is going to be mainly about um, your drawing workspace in Inventive Professional. And uh, there's a lot of features there that people are sometimes not fully aware of and not able to uh, make the most out of it. So we aim to uh, clear up any misconceptions about drawing and also advise you what's the best practices for uh, getting detailed drawings. Okay, we will begin the webinar in a few minutes. Um, we're just waiting for more people to join. So in about 60 seconds, we should start. Okay, I think uh, some more people have joined and everyone is settled and um, I can see people are asking questions. So yeah, we can go ahead and um, start. Okay, so just an introduction um, about me. Uh, my name is Irshad Hanif. I'll be conducting this webinar. I'm an application engineer with micrographics. I come from a mechanical engineering background with about eight years of experience in industry and two years of experience as an app engineer. Um, in the Autodesk channel. So I've been using um, CAD software for a while and working for the past couple of years with Autodesk and two years specifically as, as an app engineer with the Autodesk channel. Okay, so my design experience is primarily with AutoCAD, um, Inventor, Fusion 360. Um, of course, uh, I do do um, product data management with things like Vault. Um, as well as uh, more advanced uh, engineering uh, workflows uh, and tasks such as FEA analysis and um, uh, CAM uh, or either Inventor uh, CAM or Fusion 360 CAM. So uh, I, I have a fair bit of experience in the Autodesk workspace. Okay, so our agenda for today, basically we're going to start off with an introduction. Uh, we're going to do a quick recap on detailing a drawing. Um, then we're going to move on to eye properties and templates, um, just to show you how to get the best out of your text and your attributes in your drawing templates. Um, we're going to discuss uh, a little bit about tables and parts lists. Then we're going to look at bomb management. And then we might dabble onto operating eye logic and custom parameters into your drawing templates. Okay. So, section one. We're going to start with uh, views, and we're going to just going to discuss about it. Basically, a recap on how to uh, manipulate the views when you're placing your drawings in, and it's basically uh, how you place a base view, and uh, the options that you have around aligning it horizontally, but vertically, uh, making relationships between the base view and the linked views, uh, rotating at uh, angles or uh, absolute edges. So you can take a point and you can uh, rotate it about that point. You can scale it up, you can give it a name. And also when you break links, you'll be able to, uh, uh, it'll automatically create a named section view or, or not a named section view, but a named view. And from that, You'll be able to place your link view at any point anywhere going forward. Okay, staying on views, uh, with section views, you'll be able to uh, basically dissect your part, right? And you'll be able to choose which uh, point of view you're looking from on that design. 
you'll be able to create a section line, as you see there in the diagram, section AA, and you'll be able to detail that section line by simply dragging that cutout view to uh, an opposite end, and it should be in line with your drawing. Okay, you can also use key areas in one cut. And remember, section views can be as simple or as complicated as you need. Uh, you're not limited to one straight line. You can do uh, a sort of zigzag li line or a line at an angle. And we will demonstrate that shortly. And uh, in fact, let us jump to Inventor now and demonstrate that quickly. Okay. So now that we're in Inventor, we can simply go start a new drawing, or we can open up a, an existing. I'm not sure if many of you are familiar with this workflow, but we can always open up. I'm just going to go and open up something like uh, a design that I have here. I'm going to say update my assembly. All right. So you don't necessarily have to start by creating a new drawing of your design by going to new and say, I want to create a new drawing or opening up a cell menu and then facing the base views. You can right simply right click on the assembly or the part that you want to create a drawing of and you'll be able to go here and say i want to create a drawing view of that and it'll ask you to select a template and we can say create okay i have on this template just some added field in here so i'm just going to enter something in there um yes styles have been changed so we're going to say okay and it's going to ask us to place the initial view. Just going to go home so that we can get the front view. Right, as per your dialog box, you've got your styles. I'm going to remove that. Uh, and I'm going to place some views here just so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, of course, we can edit our scale. So we can say 1 is to 10, or we'll make it slightly larger. 1 is to 8. And then we can say, okay, now you'll notice that the uh, base view was the one that we first placed and everything else is linked. So for example, this is also linked and we all copy the styles of the original uh, uh, base view. Okay, I can right click, however, on one of the views. Remember, the 3D isometric view is free to move because it is not linked in any uh, linear fashion, so it's not linked as the left hand side or the top view. With these you'll see that they are linked, but this is not. So, here you can say edit view. And we can change whatever we need to. Okay. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to say edit view, and I'm going to now change what I need to. Um, for example, if I wanted to make it uh, from the north uh, east side or northwest side, um, looking like so, and I can change it to be a different style. I've got that on there. All right. Now also, like I said, these views are linked. We can simply uh, right click on one of the views and say break link. And when you do that, it will insert a, uh, a view called AA and label that such that anywhere you move it, you are easily able to identify where that view is looking from and where it's taken from. Right? So that indicates the projection of what that view is. Okay. Now you'll notice that uh, I've chosen to include the hidden lines in here. So um, I've used, I've also got the option to remove the hidden lines, but these don't look too good because, well, the dashes are too big. And I'll show you exactly how to 
change those hidden lines to be maybe like very solid lines. I prefer that. So we can always take a look at it. As is, these are just the um, hidden line removed views. So you won't see whatever's behind the uh, uh, diagram here. Okay. Um, also, like we said, we do have the option to align, uh, well, realign it. So we can say, I want to align this horizontally with that, and it should go back in place. All right, so we have the option to align it like so. Uh, horizontal, like so. And now it's fixed, and it automatically removed that section because it's now saying, hold on, this is linked. I don't need to align anymore. Then we also got the option to rotate and move these things about. So for example, I can rotate this by an edge, and I can flip it around. Or can rotate by an absolute angle. Okay, so I can say, right, let's enter maybe 25 degrees. So I can tilt it by without having to affect the model or the related parts. Okay. I'm not going to save any of that, I think, as is is fine. Okay. And lastly, we just want to take a look at um, your named styles so you do have the option to put in the label here and say test label one and we can say i want to actually edit the label put it in there um, i need to turn it on i do apologize i was supposed to say turn my label on so that you see the label and there we go it's labeled to say this is what you're Viewing and that is the scale of what you're viewing. Okay, so those are basically best practices that you want to do. So let's go back to our um, PowerPoint. All right. Then we've also got breakout views where we can uh, create a closed loop section of what we want to do. So we've got beside section views. We've got breakout views. So let's take a look at those two uh, in the next example. So section views are when we can create our own section line. So we can choose the object we want a section. And remember I said you can simply draw a line of where you want a section. So you right, continue. And we can move either to the right or left of this line that I've created. And it would section that. You can see that if I move to the other side, it's going to section We'll see the arrow pointing the other way. Now remember that uh, this is very customizable. I'm just going to place one of these here. Okay, but I did say as before. Um, you can make section views as complicated as you need to. So, for example, if I do a section view on that area and I start drawing like so, actually, no, that's not going to work. Uh, maybe I should do it better. Uh, I'll do it again. <clears throat> Click on that. I'm going to do it like so. And then I can say continue. And I'm just going to do a section around that line. That's going to take some time to calculate exactly what I've cut to. And then you can see that it is now uh, cut through that area. It's still taking some time. Let's just give it a minute. So you can see that it's cut through exactly the line that I've gone through, even though it's a zigzag line across a, an uneven part of the section. So I can scale that to maybe uh, a one is two. One is twelve. Just make it a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. 
and we're gonna just wait a few minutes for this to kick in and save itself. And there we go, we have a unique section based on our section line and it shows there with its label. Remember, each of these can be edited. So we can go in and edit the label view and we can go in and maybe change the size of it. this there we go. all right so that's um section views we also have um breakout views where we've got to create a close section loop for example uh well you've got to draw your close view first so I'm gonna go here and i'll say finish sketch And now that we have a closed loop, we can say, right, I want a uh, closed loop, and I can say, uh, I want a breakout view from, I can choose a point on any of them, or I can choose to sketch to hold through part. And I can say there, 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 there. Okay. Let's get, give that a few minutes to calculate. And it's going to ask us. We want to create a breakout view. So you can see that we've done a breakout view of that whole section there. Now it's, those sections are removed based on what I click. <coughs> so. If I've undone that, you can see the difference that it has made from what I selected. And we can go back to our PowerPoint. Okay, so the next section we'll be discussing uh, standard symbols. So if we want to insert stuff like surface uh, symbols or well symbols or any indicator for uh, datum, you can insert them here from the standard library, or you can create your own. So you can create your own uh, custom symbols. They will be saved as blocks. Um, so blocks are the same concept as from AutoCAD, where you have a little predefined saved uh, line diagram. Uh, it could be a polyline, could be just a random bunch of circles and arcs and sketches. Okay. And it will save this under a folder for sketch symbols as you see on the left there. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. I go to annotate. And just to indicate that a normal weld symbol will look like so. You can say, okay, I want to weld over there. And you'll input your data i'm just going to enter anything in here and you'll see your different type of information there however there's also the button here to insert a sketch symbol from, a sketch symbol from an external block it will ask you to select something from the library or you can create a new symbol. how does it work uh, well the moment you click define new sketch symbol it will take you to the sketch mode where you can go in and sort of draw a new type of block. So I'm going to draw a new block, just illustration. Right. And let's just, yeah, that looks okay. Right. And I'm just going to I'm just making this symbol up as I go along. Okay. So that's my, the moment you click finish sketch, that's my symbol. And you'll see now that it'll give me an area to enter a name for that symbol. So, um, symbol. Uh, 
I'm going to save that. And it saves it under the folder sketch symbol as I've indicated before. So what does that mean? That means we can simply right click on that and either save it to my symbol library. We are able to use it again. So obviously I've got to create a library if I don't have one, but in this case I do have one in my library and I can see other stuff that I have here. And I can save that so it goes in there for later use. And I can also pull it into my design any way that I want to. Okay, and that's it. So that's how you create custom symbols if you are um, not using the standard uh, one from the Inventor Library. Okay, that brings us on to the next section. Um, we've saved our custom symbols. Okay, now we want to look at uh, model dimensions for how to make use of the different types of dimension in Inventor. Okay, so you'll see that in your annotate tab in Inventor, you've got your uh, regular dimension, you've got baseline, and you've got your uh, options to arrange your dimensions. So you've got baseline, ordinate, and chain. So let's just take a look at all of them. So let's just look at a regular dimension. We know that we can have one of three input methods, either from point to point. It's going to give us that, which is, works well. Or we can just dimension a line. So a complete line that it finds, it will dimension that. Or, or you can dimension between lines. Or you can dimension between um, two lines at an angle, and it will give us the. So actually, that didn't work, but maybe if I do some angle like so. There we go. So between two lines at an angle, it will give us the angle between those two lines. Right. We've also got baseline, which does. Um, an initial uh, line for us, and then we can select all relevant lines. I click continue, and you'll see it will use that initial line as a reference and everything else uh, in relevance to that. We've also got coordinate and chain. So, chain is similar to how we have baseline, except it will put all the dimensions in between as opposed to referencing from that initial line. So for example, if I did the same thing, here, 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 here and right click it there, you'll see that it will try and squeeze, obviously the size and that you get, let me try and do better with the, I'll say from here, to here, to here, to here, to here. And you'll see that it will insert a chain link of I just wanted to loosen that up quickly. All right, click create, and now we have a set of chain dimensions. Okay, we've just discussed uh, the types of dimensions. I'm just going to move on to the next section. Uh, view representation. So we do know that um, in your inventor model, um, if I take a look at our model, let us say that there is something that we don't want to take a look at. So you do have all your views placed here, but if there's uh, a particular assembly or sub-assembly in here that you don't want to have included in your drawing, you need to make use of your view representations. So for example, I can suppress a collection of parts, let's say those two shots. I can right-click and say uh, suppress them. The moment I do that, 
Okay, I need to save it first. The moment I do that, it's going to create a new level of detail for me. And it's going to say level of detail one. And that's with the, I can always move back to uh, master where that's in. But the moment I, just to illustrate again, the moment I block off anything and suppress it, say suppress, it's going to say a new level of detail and I can save that. So it will ask me, you'll notice that there's a new dialog box when I save. Uh, uh, say okay. And now we have a custom representation they call remove shots. Why is that important? Well, let's say we were in our drawing again and oops, it's getting stuck a little bit. But, uh, let us add in a new sheet. Yeah, just Let's say we were placing a new base view of our drawing. We can choose which representation we want. So remember I have master or content versus press and the new one that are created remove shafts. And if I place it on there, you'll see that now the view gets in without those uh, two that are removed. So it's a very useful tool to block certain parts that, that may be in the way when you're giving your design out. Okay. I'm going to go back and activate my previous sheet. Okay. So just to recap some notes uh, on the view representations. So view representation control component visibility and transparency, uh, sketch uh, and, and work feature visibility. So you can also have your work planes and your sketch. Okay. Yeah, what um, the selection status, whether it's enabled or uh, not enabled. Okay, the appearance style and characteristics applied in the assembly. So that's what they also govern. Um, we're also looking at uh, magnification, viewing angles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can turn up the visibility of components, but it does not remove them from your um, view, view tree. Okay, it's the, the components are still there. They'll still appear in your uh, uh, RAM and your BOM and all of that. However, they will not uh, be removed. They're just being suppressed. Okay, so when a component is set transparent in the assembly, transparency is carried over in an associated in associated drawings. Yeah. So the notes have just skipped over to the line. Just excuse that. Uh, component transparency in the drawing view must turn off the uh, view associated. So level of details is very similar. So level of detail representations improve capacity and performance. They suppress unneeded components or replace many parts with a single part representation to reduce memory consumption and simplify the model. So you have, you'll see your inventor in your model, you have not just your representations, but your what we just discussed. All right? You have your different uh, level of details, as I've just shown you. But also, you will have uh, your views. So I can create, for example, a new view. And I can edit that view to maybe select a bunch of components or a bunch of things that I don't want. So I can say select to include, and I can say that part priority, or whatever it is. I can view all, view all excluded. So remember, whichever ones are being hidden or invisible, for example, here there's a bearing that's not shown, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all right? So I've actually shown this to you in reverse as according to the notes, but The idea is still the same. You have level of details and views.
Okay, we're just going to go back to our um, PowerPoint. <laughs> Okay, so detailing your drawings and managing your styles. Okay, here's where most people get confused. Um, a lot of times we'll get uh, inquiries from customers asking exactly how to change something as simple as their arrowheads or their text size and whatever they do doesn't seem to want to work. So let's take a look at how we were to change those things. So you can see that in our current template, um, everything is just sort of black and bland, but nothing has been customized with our styles. So arrowheads are quite large, text is quite large, and they don't seem to match. So in the Manage tab, you'll find your Styles Editor. Okay, if I click on the Styles Editor, it does take a little bit of time to open. We're just gonna wait for it to load. Okay, so here we are. You'll see that in your styles editor, you have multiple sections for each type of uh, uh, drawing attribute that you can change. So for example, your, your hatch, your dimensions, your center mark, and each of these have various options. So how does all of this work? Well, in your standards folder right at the top, you'll be able to create a standard that will define basically whatever uh, combination of styles for your example for your balloon for your dimension for your hatch for your layers etc and so on okay so i'm going to start in order to change some of these i'm going to start by creating a new uh, standard now you'll have to click on one of the uh, options in standard you can't click on standard uh, reason being it bases it on whatever you're clicking on so for example if i click there it's going to base it on that. So I'm going to start here, new style, and give it my custom style. Okay. Best practice to use uh, a, a, a format that you're familiar with or a standard that you're familiar with. Set up your millimeters or your units, and then you'll be able to take a look at all the available styles that you have. You'll notice here that you have uh, all the actives, uh, all the styles in the active standard, or all the local styles, or all styles that it sees in the entire workspace. So, uh, whatever is available with Inventor, including the ISO, DIN, NC, and so on, you'll be able to see that. I'm just going to look at the all styles. All right. Now I'm going to go here to my new style. I'm going to make that the active style. You see that it's now bold, which means I can come in here and customize exactly what I want to see. So for example, for dimensions, I can choose a different style for the way I see dimensions. So how do I make a new style? Well, I'll have to go to dimensions and make one. And I'll just look at default new style. Okay. My uh, okay, you'll see the check, uh, check, check box there was add to my new style or act, add to current active style, meaning it adds it here so that I'm able to see it. My new dim style, there it is. Let's go back there. And you'll see that I'll be able to change exactly what I want to on my dimension. So, for example, I can change my text size to change the display uh, maybe just uh, 1.5 yeah let's just change that um, we can change the color let's make it blue okay the text uh, you will use the primary textile or you can use a textile that you create. So you can create a new textile. It'll take mm -hmm. you directly to the new textile and you can say, well, I want a textile of two more, height two more, a different font. Uh, 
and perhaps a different color. Let's make it blue as well. So I'll save that. In fact, maybe we should, just for illustration purposes, we'll make a new style. Just so that we can identify it. Again, I'll do the color to blue. I'll do the height to two. And I'll say, say. That way, when I go to my dim style, I can choose the text to be my text. Okay. So you'll see that the size of the text gets grayed out because it puts it to whatever was in my text style. Okay. And I'm done with that. So now I can go back to my new style and just ensure that, yes, I want to save all of that. So let's go to dimension and say the style that we're using for dimension is uh, my dim style. I'll save and close. And you'll see that now that we've changed the size of the arrowheads and we've changed the font and we've changed the text, anything else I want to change, I can go back in there and say, right, okay, I'm not happy with the dimensions or maybe I want to use a different type of um, arrowhead. Let's just wait for this to load it again. Okay, so it is loaded and we can check, okay, what is my new dimension style? Let's take a look at that. Uh, my dim style, display. That's that. I'm just going to look at our, so if we can change, we'll see we have options for uh, how our tolerance is displayed, uh, our option for the placement of our arrowhead. So we have lots of options to place the extension lines and how the notes and the design is displayed. So everything can be changed in this manner. So I'm going to save and close that and move on to the next thing in the slide. Okay, so tables and parts list, um, that's pretty straightforward. We can look at the best practices, which is to use, you don't have to draw a um, parts list, you can use whatever's uh, in your bill of materials. So Inventor has a bill of materials included in there. You'll notice that it's this button here. And let me just save that again. Our bill of materials looks like so. Okay, and each of this data will be passed on through to our drawings. So how does that work? Well, let's activate a second sheet. And we can use our parts list option to create a new table and insert, okay, which object do we want to use as the um, base for the bomb and we can choose um, whether it's a what type of uh, bomb level so parts only structured and first level or all levels we're going to put all levels structured okay and we can say all right I'm just going to move that in there quite a lot of parts in here And you can see that we can resize this as we need. I'm just going to um, 
place that in here. So if you want to edit the parts list, this is how we'll do it. We right click edit and we can change stuff from here. So we can take a look at filtering out stuff, uh, sorting them, uh, exporting them and put it with our table layout. So for example, we can define how we want the title and the styles to look. So we can say, I want that to be uh, text. And we can change things like line spacing, just say okay. So you'll see that now it's changed to the text that I just edited. Okay. We also have an option here. To renumber and reorder them. Um, okay, you have an option to select your columns. So, for example, if there's specific eye properties you want to show on your table, you can do that. Okay. And remember, the size is based on the text sizes and etc. that we put on here. So. That is how you would use your uh, bomb parts list. Um, if you look at, um, so we basically covered creating a new table, creating new parts list, and editing your bomb. Okay, um, custom my properties and property entries. So um, if you look at our drawings, so I have a pre-made template on here. Uh, let me just show you what that looks like. I'll create a new drawing. Uh, perhaps I should choose the correct project. Okay, so uh, we're going to discuss the custom eye properties on your template. So you can see the extent of your template, what's possible. I have a, created a custom template for an example for clients. And you'll see that I went through my styles editor and changed everything that I needed to uh, for my title block. So if you look at my drawing resources, I've customized my border, uh, my title block. And if I edit, something like so, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of interesting things here. Now, this is not necessarily a tutorial on how, on how to do everything. I mean, that will obviously be covered in training. However, you'll notice that I have uh, left space for uh, custom things such as revision number or reference number and I've got a mix of attributes and regular text, right? And I've managed to combine these, right? So if you look at, I'm not going to save, I'm not going to save anything here. If you look at my manage tab, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but there is what used to be here rather. Manage, oh, there it is. So the parameters that's normally in your drawing view uh, is here in your manage tab. And what you're able to do is you're able to create um, some uh, custom parameters. And that way you can create a drop down list for uh, selecting these options here. So for example, if you go in your sheet size, you can have a drop down list and say, okay, the sheet size I want to C, E, A, B. Um, right, you can even use these in conjunction with iLogic to have rules driven uh, inputs. So, for example, here I've got uh, okay, well, file name is just regular text, um, job number you can enter in here. Let me see if we've got 
you can create a form using iLogic and each time you create a drawing you'll have this full form open here so you can enter the client detail the site detail um, you can say from a drop down list who was it checked by uh, who was it approved by etc etc so that's just a very advanced way of course again this um, is a combination of years and years of training on not just how to make a template but also how to use parameters and how to use our logic to create forms and this is the end result of what you can have okay so that brings us to the uh, last section on the uh, webinar so i'm just going to I'll move on to the last slide, which is basically our Q&A session. So if there's any questions, we will leave this section open. And you guys are welcome to type your questions in the bottom right in your team viewer. We're going to leave this uh, open for a few minutes just to get uh, any questions or you're more than well welcome to take down my details from the beginning so maybe I should just navigate to that first slide so you can ask for me I'll just leave this on at the beginning that's my details. And um, mm. you, know, you can ask for me uh, at Micrographics and we will be able to assist you if you have any questions. Okay, with that, uh, if no one else has any queries, uh, we can end the session and thank you for joining us.